you're looking at Phoenix Sprite Editor running on an F uh, 256K machine. This Sprite Editor is written by Ernesto uh, Contreras. It's in basic, though it has a machine language built into it. I'm here today to talk a bit about um, super basic and the use of procedures, how that compares to line numbers, and to talk a bit about loops and conditionals. Um, so to, to start with, let me uh, exit the program here and, and show you how to get back from an application that may be broken abruptly and get back text mode. Um, so what you're looking at though is uh, some sprites on the screen. You're looking at bitmaps on the screen and looking at text on the screen in a series of, of, of layers. I'll press the run stop key and you can see at the top there, break in line 1180, 11080. I'm gonna say cursor on because the cursor is off. I'm going to say uh, clear screen. Let's we'll see how much of it goes away. Not much. I'm going to say graphics, sorry, bitmap, bitmap off. That helps some. And I'm going to say sprite, sprite, plural, off. Okay. And now I'll say, uh, I think that, that ought to do it. I'll say list. There's other ways to do it. You can poke memory if you like. Um, you can you can do, uh, let me hit one stop here. You can say uh, poke, uh, you can use hexadecimal addresses if you like, D thousand comma seven. Of course, it's not as dramatic when um, there's nothing happening on the screen, but I'll do this again just to, just, just to illustrate. I'll stop it there, poke. There you go. Okay, so I'll turn my cursor on now. Cursor on, okay, to the screen. And uh, let's list some code here. I'm going to list the code just from the start, and then I'll list uh, some specific sections. So to begin with, a lot on the screen here, and, then, and this program goes on for, for quite a while. It's pretty uh, functional; has a lot of a lot of features built into it. You, you'll notice a couple of things. The first thing is that there are a few, if any, um, uh, go tos, go subs, or line number uh, references. Certainly, there are references to line numbers on the left side. In fact, the program is organized by line numbers. Um, beginning at your lowest number up to your highest number. Um, so when you list, it'll list it sequentially. And there's probably something worth mentioning which has to do with uh, the way you list line numbers or the way you list ranges of line numbers. Super Basic is based on BBC Basic, um, the BBC Micro Machine, in fact, uh, to be specific, which was an Acorn product. Uh, Paul Robson, who wrote this, uh, based it on his experience and, and kind of his the conventions of things that he is comfortable with and likes, which is going to take a little bit of getting used to, but it's not too difficult. The, the, the positive side of that is that he incorporated many features into Super Basic, which we never had access to here in, uh, in North America or in other parts of the world that may have been more Commodore-centric. Um, Commodore Basic is very stripped down. Um, I'll probably include a link in here to a BBC basic manual. You'll be impressed with if you spend the time to go through it. It's, it's over 500 pages long. Um, I think at the time, uh, uh, Acorn was competing with Apple, uh, who had quite an expensive machine, and they threw a lot into their into their basic, which had already been evolving. Um, but that's a kind of a separate subject. So uh, moving along, let's let's list from um, line 510. Uh, forward, which in super basic you type comma. So I'll do this and I'll hit the stop right about there. And you'll see I've got uh, line 510 is get mouse. It's a function. It's calling a function. It's not a built-in function. That's a, a, a function that um, that uh, was defined um, by Ernesto in, in his code. The other thing you'll see on this uh, screen, scanning from top to bottom, is again the absence of line numbers. So sure they're on the left, but there's no references. There's no go-tos. Uh, third thing you'll, you'll see is, um, and I'll point my finger actually, is uh, hex addresses again built directly in. Uh, you don't have to do any conversion or, or talk to the machine in decimal because it, it can do either. Um, uh, you'll see calculations. So the quick look here and the quick message is that there are functions. Line numbers are not as much of a thing though. I do see at the bottom here, he's got to go to 1070. Um, I'll also mention that you'll see nesting of, uh, of, of conditionals and ifs. Um, and I won't go into the, the benefits, else's and all of the other, other, other ways that conditionals work in super basic, but you know, you can browse the manual. It'll behave as, as you probably have used in other languages such as Python or JavaScript. Um, so let me move on to quickly list, uh, let's see, I believe uh, 10,000 onward is where his functions are stored. Let's have a look. 
Yep, looks like it. So here we are in Ernesto's code at the 10,000 uh, kind of, uh, you know, section. And you can see him defining uh, his procedures, starting with, this is a comment, starting with a, with a tick mark or, or a, uh, what is it, apostrophe, single, single quote. Um, and then you've got your proc, SPR cursor. And here's what it does. And here's the end proc, finished. You have his next proc, set SPR, and he's got parameters which he passes in, et cetera, end proc, and these go on. In fact, listing, in addition to doing listing ranges, uh, you can also list a proc, I believe. Let me do SPR cursor. I may need parent, uh, parentheses. No, well, let's see. Let's do, sorry about that. There we go, yeah. So you can list procedures uh, as well. So in the middle of working on something, if you forget exactly what you did in a procedure, rather than listing several, several, you know, screens worth of code uh, to, to get down to the procedure to remind yourself, you can simply list a procedure. And provided you have uh, small procedures, you can have the code on top you're working on, and you can have a little space on the bottom. And again, this is a 60 line screen, which is fairly generous. Um, you can list, you know, procedures and, and then hop back up and, and continue to edit your code. Um, so let's see if I missed anything here. Well, I guess I should mention that there's no renumber command, but you don't necessarily need a renumber command. Uh, once you get into, you know, working in, in a procedural uh, context, line numbers be become less important. In fact, uh, some of the code that, that Paul's written for his own basic uh, to demonstrate uh, things has been done in an editor in kind of a cross-platform uh, development environment where he edits in a, in, in a text editor on his, uh, his PC, his Mac, or his Linux machine. And then he pushes code into the box, which gets line numbers applied, and it simply gets tokenized and then uh, saved kind of an optimal format. So I, I talk a little bit about that um, in the memory management portion of the super basic discussion. But, uh, you know, suffice to say, it's full featured, has modern developmental constructs. It's much easier environment to, to get stuff done quickly. There'll be sample code posted on the Phoenix Marketplace website as, as time marches forward. It's it's inevitable that more people will be writing basic code and, uh, you know, wishing to share it. So uh, keep your eyes open for that. I'll paste the link below.